Betty. I guess I need the mic. Okay. I've never talked in a mic before. <laughs> this is not my thing, so bear with me. Um, so I'm, my presentation today, can you hear me okay? Yes. My presentation today is a two-part presentation. The first part is going to be about clicker training. And the second part is going to be about running a rabbit agility club, followed by a live agility demonstration. Um, and you'll find that the two aren't as closely related as you might think. And I'll talk about that in the second part of my presentation. So, um, yeah, my introduction makes me sound more busy than I am. I'm actually, at this point, really only doing the Rabbit Agility Club. That was over 14 years of um, volunteering, but um, anyway, uh, okay. So I think both of the people that got me interested in clicker training and, um, that, and the Agility Club are here today is, there's Olga. Olga was the one that I, um, she runs the Vancouver, Vancouver Rabbit Agility Club, so I picked her brain before starting up our club, but she had been doing that for how many years? Okay, so she'd been probably doing it for about, it's probably been at least a year. Yeah, and then is Andrea still here? There's Andrea. Andrea came to a San Diego House Art Society Bunny Fest in 2008, I think, and did a clicker training agility demonstration. And I was like, oh my God, that's the coolest thing ever. I need to do this. So I started doing um, clicker training with my bunnies at home and, um, and would also send emails to, and videos to Andrea and say, how am I doing? Am I doing this right? <laughs> And um, so she was great in helping me uh, do the clicker training. Um, so let's see, we can go to the next slide. Okay, so here are a few things that you can um, teach your bunnies through clicker training. Uh, climb into your lap, come when called, use the litter box, um, behavioral problems, get in the carrier or a basket, sit still for nail trims, and play games, do tricks, and learn how to run an agility obstacle course. So the last one is the only one I've done. So don't ask me about the others. <laughs> but I know you can do it. And um, there's this, this book, maybe some of you have seen, Clicking with Your Bunny, or with Your Rabbit. And that actually does tell you how to do a lot of these things. Um, I recommend it. It's a good book. Okay, next slide. All right. What kinds of bunnies can be clicker trained? Active bunnies, lazy bunnies, quiet bunnies, outgoing bunnies, shy bunnies, smart bunnies, not so smart bunnies because as we all know there's no such thing as a dumb bunny. And click so in other words, pretty much any rabbit can be clicker trained. I've even seen, you know, like disabled bunnies do a little bit of clicker training, uh, depending on what you want them to do. They're not going to jump over 10 bars on an agility course, but okay, uh, next slide. Um, so, oh, I got my slides a little out of order here, uh, but anyway, when you're choosing an agility bunny, if you're like me and you have, uh, you know, 10, 12 rabbits in the house, you might actually get to pick which bunny might be best for agility. Um, the first bunny I did agility or clicker training with was um, my bunny Bernie. And this is just a fun little video that kind of shows why I thought he'd be good at agility because he's, he, he was, he's, he's, um, he passed the Rainbow Bridge. Um, but he was a very, very outgoing, athletic, adventurous bunny. And um, go ahead and show the video. He would do this for my attention when I was sitting at my desk. And it didn't matter whether the dog was on the sofa or not. Every day and I would 
crack up every single time. Um, so yeah, so I thought he'd be, he'd be really fun to do that with. Uh, next slide. Um, tools for clicker training. Uh, the book I just told you about is helpful. Um, a clicker. Treats. Um, as far as treats go, um, you want something that's small that doesn't require a lot of chewing because then you have to wait for them to finish it. Uh, uh, you want to, um, you can use a large treat such as a carrot or a banana where they just take a bite out. You just give it to them real quick to take a bite out of. I don't actually do it that way. I actually try to avoid sugary treats because my bunnies have a tendency to be overweight and um, I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> and um, yeah, and, you know, fat bunnies cannot jump over a bunch of bars, so um, it's best not to do that. Don't let them get fat. And in fact, if, if what I do is um, my bunnies are so incredibly food motivated that I just use their pellets, their daily ration of pellets. And instead of putting it in their pen, I just would set them aside and use it for clicker training, so they're not even getting extra food. Now pellets aren't going to work for all bunnies. Some bunnies that aren't as food motivated are going to need a much more valuable treat than that, like a bite of banana or something, or, or at least um, some, sometimes I'll use KT Exact or something that's uh, alfalfa based just because it's more special. Uh, and then you don't want something that's messy because they're going to be foraging around for the crumbs and again you're going to be waiting for that. Um, and then the other thing you'll need is a target. It doesn't have to be this, but this is really great because it's got a little bell in it, so it really kind of gets the bunny's attention. Um, you could use a hairbrush or whatever, just something that they are supposed to focus on. I'll explain that in a minute. And then finally, you'll want a um, familiar non-stressful area for them where they'll feel safe and comfortable. Next slide. Oops, sorry. Okay, all right, I'm on the right slide. Uh, the basics of clicker training is first you're gonna um, introduce the clicker. So you get a clicker. Technically you can just, you can make a noise yourself or even say good bunny or whatever, but the clicker is great because it's consistent and it's fast. Um, so it, it just, it kind of, I recommend an actual clicker. Um, then you're going to want to get the bunny to do the behavior you want, and I'll talk more about that on the next slide. Um, you, the click, the purpose of the click is that it tells you, it tells the bunny that you've done what I want and you're going to get a reward. So it doesn't even have to, in the beginning it has to be instantaneous because ha they have to associate the click with the reward, but as you progress, you can have them do a few things and click each time and they know or click at the end you know as you as you do it more they'll um, they'll you can wait longer in between giving the click and the reward I hope that makes sense <laughs> um, then you'll add a cue if you want to teach your bunny the name of the behavior so like if you're getting them to jump you'll say jump or if you want them to go through a tunnel you can say tunnel uh, this is kind of an optional thing. Um, and then over time, you will phase out the clickers and treats, maybe just treat at the end of um, whatever you're having them do, like run an agility course or whatever. And of course, you want to have fun. Next slide. How to get the desired behavior. So um, after you teach them that the click means reward, you're going to start using this and have them look at it and even just looking at it they get a click and a reward and then you want them to get closer to it and closer to it and closer to it until they start actually putting their nose on it and that's ultimately what you want and then you click and give a reward. Um, so if you see them looking at the, at the target then you click and give a reward. And then if you're trying to train them to do something like um, stand on their hind legs, you just, if they happen to do it, click and give them a reward and eventually they'll start doing it more. Um, you can also lure with food, but it's not the most effective because 
they don't, they aren't, it's not a natural behavior for them to follow food, but um, it'll work with some bunnies. Um, and then the target, which I just talked about, and shaping towards the target is what I was just talking about with getting closer and closer to it. All right, next slide. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this, but I just wanted to mention some of the fun things you can do with clicker training. Um, catch, fetch, I'll just let you read, I'm not going to read them to you. Tug of war, <laughs> maze navigation. Um, some of these things obviously you don't even need to click or train, but if you want to have them do it on command, then you can make it be a little more fun with clickers. Next slide. Sitting, standing, or walking on hind legs. Give me 10 and give me five. Give me 10 is where they stand on their hind legs and put both palms, uh, both paws on your upturned palm, and give me five is when they actually just do one. Spin, you know, you could have them spin around on cue. Dancing. Uh, running between your feet, and hide and seek. And then here are some more games, a little more advanced games that you can do with clicker training. And these, I all, I have videos of all of these if you don't believe it. <laughs> uh, basketball, soccer, bowling, weaving between your legs, and agility tricks. Next slide. So we'll start with basketball. Now let me first say um, a few of these videos are Andrea's that she generously shared with me. Um, and then I added music to them because <laughs> I'm just that way. So uh, yeah, go ahead and play the video. <laughs> they really enjoy it. It's definitely a fun thing for them and obviously fun for us to watch and, and interact with them. Uh, the next one is bowling, or sorry, soccer. I got ahead of myself. The next one's soccer. This is another of Andrea's videos. Soccer. All right, and the next one is bowling. This is, uh, this is my bunny domino. at a dollar store. Um, now the bowling alley is a little more complex. We had some leftover wood flooring and so my husband made that, but obviously you don't need to have that. In fact, you can just do it in the hall. Uh, as in the next video. A hush falls over the crowd. Here comes Bernie. <laughs> I think most bunnies can do that without clicker training. And then here's another of Andrea's videos that I added music to.
And then this is just a little montage of, um, I think it's Bernie and Domino doing um, jumps um, in my, at my house. That's Andrea's bunny. That's Barnaby. He was my other clicker bunny. And then finally, knowing when to stop, because, you know, bunnies, they'll let you know. Um, by hopping away, lying down, grunting at you, hopping in the litter box. Uh, next slide. Okay, so now, we're on the second part of my presentation, which is our San Diego Rabbit Agility Club. Um, in 2014, the leaders at HRS asked me to, if I'd be interested in starting up and running a Rabbit Agility Club because of all the stuff he just saw. And they knew I'd been doing that because, you know, posting videos everywhere. Um, and I thought that sounded like fun, so I said I would. And I immediately contacted Olga and picked her brain and asked her all about her club, the, everything from logistics to um, the equipment. And she gave me a lot of great information. And then later, after we'd been talking for a while, she goes, oh, by the way, we don't use clicker training. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> that's um, <clears throat> the only way I know how to train bunnies to do agility. And she said, yeah, it just doesn't work. They don't, they don't, you know, it just doesn't work on the course. And I said, okay, well, we'll see how it goes. And sure enough, she's right. Um, something about, I think, being away from home because we hold our meetings, you know, at a central location and they're more interested in where they are, their surroundings, and they're very excited and they're just not that interested in treats. Some are, but most of them aren't. And so she said, I'm like, well, what do you do then? And so she sent me a video that showed a, how they kind of just gently guide them through the course. Um, and so that's what we do. And that's why I was saying it's not all that closely related. I'm a huge fan of clicker training and highly recommend it for doing it at home with your bunnies because as you can see, it's a lot of fun and you can do a lot with it. And you can also do a lot with the shelter bunnies with it. But for the agility clubs, you can try it, and some of my members did try it, but it just didn't seem to work very well. So, um, uh, you can go to the next slide. Okay, the, the ideal agility bunny is athletic, active, adventurous, and not the giant breeds. This is ideal though. Any bunny can give it a try, and we even have a couple of giant breeds in our club, but the jumps are hard on their joints, so we, ha we keep the, bo the bars, the jumps lower for them. Um, so, next slide. Um, some reasons to do agility. Uh, the bunny in this picture is Penny, not my Penny, but the other Penny. We have two Pennies in our agility club, and she is here today as well, and hopefully we'll do this for you. Um, but in case she doesn't, I have videos. Uh, <laughs> um, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> so uh, why to do rabbit agility to exercise your bunny's mind and body? Um, to build your bunny's confidence. And, um, you know, Penny was the most shy bunny. The first agility club meeting she came to, she huddled in the corner and hid the whole time. And I'm like thinking, and this was towards the very beginning of the club, so I hadn't seen that yet. And I just thought, oh, this bunny is not gonna work out. It's, she's just too shy to do agility. 
you can see I was very wrong. She definitely started warming up to it and went, wow, this is really fun. And, and now she's, she's our little high jumping agility star. Um, so it helps build their confidence and you know, the interaction between you and the bunny can help um, make a stronger bond. And of course, it's good bunny PR. You can amaze your friends and family. And it's fun. Next slide. So the San Diego Rabbit Agility Club, we meet twice a month at the Adoption Center, which hopefully most of you got a chance to see or will when you're here. This is our kind of, I think we call it the all-purpose room. It's where we have our hobby hours as well and um, where we set up our meetings. Um, our dues are $50 for six months, $25 for each additional rabbit, and that includes a t-shirt. And if Jordan and, uh, could stand up and model our lovely t-shirt. <laughs> We have um, about eight active members. Um, we have some people that just show up every now and then. And we have you know, probably only like four or five that are really consistently there every time, uh, or almost every time. Even I'm not there every single time. We've gotten to the point where we have some members who have been so much that I'll say, hey, can you run the meeting for me? Because I can't make it. And so it's great. Um, we don't generally use harnesses or leashes. It's optional if people want to. Um, but we enclose the course in a pen so it's perfectly safe and we want everything to be voluntary with the, with the bunnies. Here's a picture of the course which I kind of realized I didn't need to include since we have a course over there. But um, the other thing I was going to say about this is every once in a while the room isn't available so sometimes we'll go to a park to um, hold the meeting there. All right, so I don't know how well uh, Penny is going to uh, perform today. My Penny. We have two pennies. Um, so I did include a lot of videos of our bunnies um, at the agility meeting so you can see what they look like when they're um, not being watched by 200 people in a big room where they've never been before. <laughs> so here's a video of um, my Penny on the course. give her a treat at the end. Um, some general guidelines of the club. We don't, I think I mentioned already, we don't force the bunnies to do every, anything. We just gently show them what to do. Um, my own personal rule that I just um, made because I can't stand seeing people guiding, like, trying to show them. It's not like they're kicking them or anything, but you know, they'll just kind of stand there and nudge them with their feet. I'm like, no, it's just too disrespectful to the bunnies. You, you need to get down on their level and just gently guide them. I also want to minimize picking up the bunny because, as you know, most don't like that, and I want the experience to be as happy and stress-free as possible for them. Um, Treats are optional, like I mentioned, they don't seem to respond that great to them. So, um, but I welcome trying it. Anything that makes it work better and more fun for them, I welcome. Um, pay attention to the bunny's body language and stop when they seem tired or stressed. And don't get frustrated if they don't do something. Um, we have a lot of fun with the bunnies that have their little quirks and don't cooperate. <laughs> um, it's kind of endearing. So just kind of go with the flow, because they, they're not dogs. I do agility with my dog, too, and it's completely different. The dogs want to please you. The bunnies, they don't care about pleasing you. They just want to have fun and not feel like they're about to be eaten. OK. So here's an example. This is my um, bunny, Bam Bam. He's a Flemish giant. And I don't actually normally take them to the agility meetings. This is actually in my garage. And this is um, just kind of an example of a first time, although this was actually his second time, but it was the first day. 
and how I just kind of guide them through the course. And we kind of stay behind them. They'll go off to the side, but by staying behind them, it kind of shows them what direction we want them to go. Most bunnies aren't going to run to you. Three years, Penny still does. She skips this one all the time. <laughs> That's actually really good, though, for our first time. I think it was partly because we were at home, so he felt more comfortable. And like I said, some pennies just get out there and literally huddle up in the corner and hide until they realize, oh, well, this is actually kind of cool. Look, there's things I can jump over. Um, do you have a question? Oh, yeah. Oh, um, you know, I got them from a website um, that I don't think is in business anymore, but you can get them on Amazon. Um, you can get them at um, like school supplies, Costco, Home Depot. There's a lot of places where you can get them. Um, but if you want to shop around, I, I think the, it was called Get Rung, um, where I got it, but I think they actually are selling on Amazon now. So, um, And there's another company who, one of my club members just really has gotten into it, and he has literally set up his own agility course. He has more equipment than I do at this point, and he brings some of it to our meetings. And he bought some interlocking mats from this company that I will share with you guys um, when I send links to anyone who's interested in the suppliers. But they are so, this company is so excited about um, that their mats are being used for bunny agility. They've never heard of that. And they've like posted pictures and videos on their blog. But I can't think of the name of it, but I'll let you guys know. Um, Let's see. Okay, next slide. And uh, conversely, here's another first time video. This is a little more um, like what you might see, although this bunny is having so much fun that I just had to include it because it's really, he was just having a blast. <laughs> he was literally thinking while going over the jumps. Not every time, but you'll see a few. gets chinned a lot. thing is that that was his one and only meeting after the meeting I'm like oh I'm so excited that you're here oh well we're moving <laughs> like, no. you can move to leave the bunny here <laughs> okay next slide all right now we'll talk about equipment um, these this is the equipment we use um, pause box jumps hoop jump uh, 
Well, um, I actually have individual, individual slides on all of these um, pieces of, equi of equipment. There are other things that you can use, tunnels. We don't use tunnels just because I know the bunnies are going to park themselves in it and we'll have a hard time getting them out. I also don't use weave poles um, just because I'm a little nervous about their backs um, being so fragile. I'm worried about that motion, but I've toyed with the idea of doing widely spaced weave poles where they don't bend too much. It might, might be okay, but so far we haven't used them. Okay, so um, the first is the pause box. And um, we kind of mostly use it just as a starting box, um, but technically it should be, at least with dog agility, it's kind of in the middle of the course and they're supposed to actually stop on it. And then, yeah, none of them do that. Um, so, <laughs> so it works well as kind of a starting and ending box. Um, and then the jumps, so this is the video. That's Lucy, she's a Flemish giant. This is Holly and Grace. They're a bonded pair, so they run the course together. And this is Pikachu. He's one of our newest members, and he's already one of the best. This is the guy that has built his own agility course. And that's Penny. Um, not my Penny. Jordan's Penny, who's here today. I invited Pikachu, but he's really, he's so new that he's really shy in front of groups, so um, he opted not to come. And then the hoop jump, that's Bam Bam again. These two are Candy and Tito, who are so adorable, but they just moved away. They were club members for years. <laughs> and that was just put in for comic relief. <laughs> Uh, next one is the broad jump. So I, I've kind of started in um, less bars and worked our way up. This is Tribble, who's here today. And um, this is her first time doing this obstacle. And then just a few minutes later, her second time. Look at the difference. This is Lucy. Hallie and Grace. <laughs> And Pikachu. Yeah, I know. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, and now according to the bunnies, the much less fun A-frame. They don't seem to like the A-frame much. <laughs> That's okay. This is Tribble. She's one of the few that'll do it. <laughs> so when the, when the pairs are bonded, we let them go on the course. They don't have to go on the same time, but we let them if they want to. <laughs> and the teeter-totter. and I thought they would. It's pretty simple. Yeah, that was all I could find in my videos of anyone even doing it. <laughs> all right, um, and another thing I just want to mention, you, you probably noticed in some of the videos, the bar is getting knocked off. They're, that's by design. 
Uh, the bars are designed to be very loose on the little cup holders because if the bunnies hit them, we want them to fall off so that they don't get injured. Uh, oh yeah, this is a video too. This shows how they, there's Penny. <laughs> Someday I'll have to do a bloopers reel. <laughs> um, and then while the bars accidentally get knocked off sometimes, yeah. sometimes they're knocked off on purpose. Just fun, and I, or a combination. <laughs> that, yeah, I mean, I really do believe that it's fun. Like the first bunny, Grace, she does that all the time. It's like her thing. Don't, don't stop her because when we have one bunny that does that, he only does it on four bars. Like he runs two, three, bars, and he'll run four Uh huh. one bunny every time if there's two or three bars he'll do it but if there's four bars he goes up and he pulls the second bar out and goes through it I think is it a Dutch no, he's a oh, okay because I've seen a video where a Dutch does that it's okay so yeah it, so, exactly and that that's why I'm saying just embrace these kind of quirky things because I mean you guys are laughing hysterically. It's fun. It's like they all have their little personalities, and that's what we love about bunnies. Okay, science bunnies want to stop lying down on the agility course or on the equipment itself. <laughs> that was the funniest where the one was lying on the ramp with the legs. It's like, what? <laughs> uh, another sign they want to stop um, is when they actually hide under the equipment. Now actually, and I, tr I tried to find a video and I just couldn't find one, but sometimes the bunnies will actually go under the jumps. They'll squeeze under those bars when they don't want to do it. And that's actually what Penny was doing in that photo, but, um, or she was about to, but she, uh, and she just did it at our last demo and I didn't have my video going. Uh, here's just one more video in case Penny doesn't perform for us today. <laughs> This has um, a couple of our newer equipments. Um, see, right by the pause box. And then she has a little shake it out here first. <laughs> and then she spent about a full minute not going over that, so I just edited it out. <laughs> And then I gave her a treat at the end, because she still did good, even though she didn't do everything. <laughs> and that is the end. Who is very slow and steady. Mm -hmm. oh, and she's deaf. The clapping's okay with triple, because she's deaf. <laughs> she's deaf.
most consistent, willing to do every obstacle. Oh. <laughs> She normally likes the eight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is definitely the largest crowd we've ever done a demo for. Because now that she's been around once, she may actually do it better. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. But if not, we'll just get the other pin out here. All right. We know what to do now, right? <laughs> Are you done chewing?
Thank <laughs> you. 